what architects can do large scale project which has been there forever and it shows harmony, techniques, beauty, all its aesthetics. And what we expect usually in our minds from the history of the architecture of the Muslim societies is that. But the reality is today this. Most of the cities around us, they look like this. If you want, is a globalized view of many cities, being Cairo, Karachi, Tehran, um, Jakarta, etc. They all look the same. Sorry, it went, I think, yeah. So, in order to remedy this, the Aga Khan, designer Aga Khan, he decided to create an award for architecture. And because of that, was he was seeing this lack of information. We were not sure what's happening on the other side, and we were all thinking that in each of our countries, what is we see is the important. Um, the, here I'm just going to very quickly say what was the vision. The vision is that how you can inspire to protect the past and inspire the future. This was one of the important things because we always talk about our past and future without saying we're not going to repeat the, the past. This is very important. And the most important thing is that how to improve the quality of life. Because what is the role of architecture is not to build just, it's not, it's not fine arts. It is something that is done with building. And you have to, what is very important is the quality of life in, this, in your home, in your city, in your neighborhood, and in your country. The, and the other thing is that how we could do it is through examining uh, the projects in depth. Now, I've put these names here, it's not like a name dropping, but in the past 37 years, we have had the collaboration of all different peoples. The famous architects that you can see them in the history, from the those who died like uh, Kenzo Tange or James Sterling from those days, to Zaha Hadid and Foster and Herzog and Eisenman, all of them have been working with us, plus the architects from the uh, Muslim countries and philosophers and thinkers and artists. So all these people together in these years, they have been contributing to the international architectural discourse. What I'm trying to emphasize here is that what we have been doing is not to do something in parallel to the main architectural, international architectural discourse. So these are the people who they come, they work together, they have got a number of meetings, the jury meetings, and one of the things that we always offer is that all the jury people who come to our jury, juries, they learn. They're not coming to a jury just, just to judge, like doing an action, because usually you go to architectural competitions, you just go see the series of projects, and every, all the time you do that, and that is it. No, here is, we always guarantee that the architects, when they come, the mo even the most famous architects, they learn something from the process. So this learning is a very important thing. Um, the question is that what they want to do, to see. Uh, in English there's a term says to compare apples and oranges. And that is what ha happens. Um, we consider architecture in all their aspects. So in order for a project to be presented, it has got three, it has to be uh, uh, answer three eligibility criteria. One has to be built and be in use minimum of one year, maximum six years, because we want to contemporary, we look at the contemporary efforts. Second, it has to be in a country which has got a Muslim presence or where the Muslims are in diaspora, living in other countries, but there's a relationship with the culture of the Muslim societies. And thirdly, like any other uh, award, uh, they should not be to have to do anything with the Aga Khan himself, all his institutions, or all the jury members. So all are all out. Here, the process starts with a number of jury members. This is, I think, one of the jury members you know. He was giving a lecture here last year, Murat Taban Yoglu. This is Wang Shu, and there were David Ajay, etc. This is some of the, this last jury which we had. They go through a number of nominations which come from all over the world. Something around four, five hundred projects they come. They go th for three days through these projects. 
they choose 20 projects. We send an expert to go in the field, see the projects, come back with a report, and they, give, they have to explain the reports in person to the jury. This is very important because an expert can write something, can be not objective, but when you come and present it yourself, the jury can te test you and make sure that you are not, not too much for or too much against a project. The jury again, they deliberate for another two days and they come and choose five winners, which these five projects, they share, uh, they go to a ceremony, which each time, each year, the ceremony is done in one of the most important historical mo monuments or places, and they share one million dollars, which is the award. In the past 37 years of existence, uh, the award has go is covered, almost I can see it more or less, all the project which has been completed between 1955 and 2011. Every three years it just changed, so next time will be another three years. So we have really covered the contemporary architecture of modern societies. We have received around 4,000 nominations from 99 countries. Um, I was just having a look, we had something like 40 co projects coming from the Balkans, from Kosovo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, Macedonia, Bulgaria, this region. And, um, and then uh, we have got 111 projects which has won an award during these 12 cycles, 30 years. And also we have got seminars. We organize a number of seminars, exhibitions, we do publications, so these are the, all the activities that we do. Um, these are the, just to give you an uh, a overview of the project, which has won an award. This is, they've been in um, the 99 countries I was uh, talking to, these are the um, nominated projects. The winners are uh, from these in, the, in Africa in 59, one in Africa, Asia, and Europe and Balkans. So we have a number of, in Turkey and Balkans, we've got a very big number of projects which have won an award. Now, when we're talking about architecture, what is architecture? What we consider as architecture? It could be high-rises, it could be slum upgrading, because this is very important. Uh, in 1980, when this award was created, most of you were not born, uh, then in the field of architecture, slum upgrading was not considered as architecture. It was a development and engineering work. Um, engineering has got a very important role because these are some water towers because they will they have got an impact on the landscape and the look of the city. We've got how you can build with credit. These are is a project in Bangladesh that they could build. 50,000 houses in a period of two years by giving $150 loans to people and with some houses they give. It is architecture in other countries, where it is Institut Mont d'Arab in Paris. It is landscaping. So all of these are considered as architecture. Now, what is the award about? The Alcon Award for Architecture is a thinking process. And what we think we've done that it has gone from architecture, who is not looking at architecture, but is looking at society. It is not a national event, because there has been many, many awards before that were working on national level, um, the gold medal of um, this country, that kind, and it has become international. We, it is not only celebration, it's like the Pritzker Prize, which I was the other day, we're not only celebrating the person, but what we're doing is we're creating knowledge. And it is not something that we're talking about architecture to only the experts. We are bringing architecture to the public knowledge. So these are the where we think as a learning process we have been achieved to do it in those years. Now this is some of the things. Architecture can have different ways of so some of the winners. But what is important is to see that what is unique about the Alcon Award for Architecture, what it makes a difference to the other awards, because this now, today, we've got hundreds and hundreds of awards around the world, especially with internet, you, anybody can make an award and you give an award. But what is the meaning of it? One is that this is the process is very important, and the second is that it's about that the, how, what is the large spectrum of the project that we've got, 
architects and non-architects have been uh, involved, and also we're bringing it to the decision makers. So this is a very important fact. And this is what to give you an example of different kinds of architecture which have been considered. We bring on the same level the famous architects like Norman Foster with the master mason who has been working from a village in Yemen. They are at the same level. So this is not an award only for the top architects or celebrities. It is for all the people who have had an impact in the building. No project is the work of an architect. That is just a wrong way of looking at things. Every single project is a collaboration of the vision of the client, the builders, the users, and the architect themselves together. And what makes it achieve is how is that mechanism works between them. This is the celebration we just had it in Portugal last time. It's always we bring it to the highest level in the society because for a few days, it's like what you're doing here with this week, you bring architecture to the attention of a country. Maybe it's easy in Kosovo and Pristina that if you have done an architecture event, because the city is small, the country is small, everybody knows about it. But if you think about a country like India, with one and a half billion people living there, when you want to bring for two days, three days architecture to the main discourse of the press, of the event, architecture is not talked at that level at all. And this is very important because by engaging the people, you can um, upgrade the quality of architecture that they want. The other thing which we do is very important. We go to the cities, whenever there's a project, whenever we go to the site of that project, and we celebrate with the people themselves. So, if there's a school in Bangladesh, in the rural areas, after these big ceremonies that we have, we go there, we make them aware, this is uh, in the school, or this is this, uh, uh, the factory, I, I went there with the factory people, it is Ember Aralat who is going to come here in two days, give you a lecture, it's with him sitting, this is his head, <laughs> that he's happy, happy, because for an architect, for all of you, it's not only important to be famous somewhere else. You want to be known in your own context and country because that's where you can use that celebrity to be more effective. Also, if you make people aware of what they have, when we went to the factory, this factory, which one was one of them, is a very good example of industrial buildings, and we celebrated with the workers one day, all of them, 500 people, they were, we, they were eating together, we had lunch together. And they, all of a sudden, they look at the building differently. They work their space. Because, oh, the space that I've been working is a better, is one of the best in the world. So they feel better, they take better care of their building. Because one of the main things is also that if we are not aware of the importance of the building that we're working, we don't take care of it enough. And that is one of the problems of today, that by negligence, a lot of, there is a lot, big degradation in our societies. This is also, as I was saying, that bringing, with not only having a, a history, but we've brought the television to, this is again Ember, we're in Turkey, with the architects separately, in the university separately, in places. So we bring this discourse to different levels of society. Another thing which was a bit important, that we have brought architecture to the large number of people. We had made films. It was not we made the films. No, it was very interesting in the past three cycles. The BBC World became interested in us. And they made a number of series of programs on the Archon Award for Architecture for half an hour, showing it all over the world. And they gave us a number that over one billion people, or something around them, they have seen the project. Not only that, because it's these kind of architecture is interesting for a large number of people, for the society, if you make it available, you don't talk very about techniques, but you talk about the life, the quality of life. Um, the Emirates was important, interested. British Airways, they were showing it the, that you could see them on their documentary films. Also, we have got a, a publication, we do publish a lot. These are the three books, the color you cannot see, but that's red, that's the book that. Uh, it's on the last award. Uh, we do that. So, for the 2013 cycle, this is what you're going to see in the exhibition, which you have seen some of them. It is, as I, I just repeat, it has five levels. So, we had 500 projects were nominated, 411 were presented to the jury because they were somewhere not eligible. 
20 in the first meeting were selected. Uh, they were sent on on-site review. The jury uh, saw them again after six months, and there was an award ceremony. These are the 20 projects which you are seeing in the exhibition. And they're coming from different parts. They are, all of them are very good quality. All of them are important and they're, they are in the book and exhibition. So we don't have a kind of losers and winners. It's a kind of winners and less winners because they are, it's not a matter of the only thing they do. But the five projects which won an award, all of them merit of something important. The first one is the city of Birzeit in Palestine. Under the very harsh uh, situation that they have, the, the citizens they are feeling that some of these architects, it's an NGO, that people are losing their identity by losing the country and just the old buildings. And they have brought back to the city a new life by restoring them little by little, by bringing money, finding the international fund, and making the program of not big cities but small cities. Birzeit is small. Now they're doing the same technique and system in 50 other villages in all over Palestine, in the West Bank. So this is a very important factor that they've won an award. Uh, the second project is in Iran, in Tabriz, is the bazaar. Uh, pa participation of people is very important. No government can do large-scale projects on its own. The problem is that in a lot of places, in a lot of countries, the people, they feel that government is responsible to do everything for them. So they don't do anything, government is not capable of doing anything, so things change. In Tabriz in Iran, which is the biggest bazaar, one of the biggest bazaars in the world, all in brick, in, built in brick, it's got five and a half kilometers of uh, um, these alleyways, 5,000 uh, shops, they started the project by restoring them. And the people started, because little by little business was going out. It was going in the streets, in the shopping malls. So they, with this project, they themselves were convinced, the, the people of the project convinced the owners to put in money with the participation. The businesses came back, and now the prices of the of shops of themselves went up. So you know, when the program works, it's just got a double way of thinking. So this is about the participation of people. The other project in Sudan, an Italian group of architects and who work very closely with an Italian NGO who are surgeons. They work together in creating this hospital in Sudan. It's an emergency cardiac hospital that they, a number of Italian doctors, they go every year, they go and work and for free, they, they operate people. But what they've done also, is that the creator, we're working very close with them. Then next to this, I don't, uh, as you can see it in the images in the exhibition, the, all the containers that they brought to the Khartoum with the equipment for the, uh, for the hospital, they made it into the housing for the staff, but, but using it with installations. So they reuse, it was kind of a reuse of material as well with the containers. We've seen a lot of containers used in architecture, but this is a very good example of it, that's how it was done. The last, pro the other project is a cemetery in Austria, in Vorarlberg, which is uh, on east of, uh, west of, um, uh, west of um, Austria, and it's a very interesting phenomenon. The phenomenon is that they created a, a, a cemetery for the Muslims. Before that, there's around 10,000 Muslims live in this area and they're mostly from, coming from um, the Balkan countries and uh, Turkey. In the old days, they had this tradition that when they would come as workers, when they died, they sent back to the village. But now, their second generation and the third generation are living in Europe. They don't consider themselves anymore. So they wanted to keep their parents with them. So they went and there was a whole process of negotiations with the government, uh, of the local authorities, and they created this uh, cemetery, uh, which is a beautiful landscaping as well, uh, in uh, Warmberg. And this is a work which is done by uh, Ayat Israel. She's a, uh, also, she, uh, she teaches, she's Boston, she teaches at MIT. She's done the work on the grills. 
The last project is a bridge done by Marc Mimram, who you all know is a French engineer architect who's done many uh, uh, bridges. So what is important here is that how he has dealt with the bridge in a city, landscaping and planning and the city planning and how the bridge is done and how the techniques that they use, which is this very low technique that done for this bridge, they have not cut the city in two. Because one of the main things which happens is that when you make a bridge, by the time that the bridge picks up, the city is cut into two. So they have created an, a, a number of passages underneath which can be used for public usage. So this is the other thing which won this award. Now, I just wanted to bring your attention to how the jury looks at this, what they are choosing, what is the criteria that they're using. So somehow, one can say that there are five important things that they look at. One is the process. The architecture, the process in architecture is very important. It's not the end result. It's how you get to the project. So the whole process is very important. And then, for example, here in the, I can give you an example in Mostar. The way that they did the conservation was very important. How they created the system that they could use the local, um, the, uh, the, with the selling the tickets for the um, cinemas, etc., create money to be able to bring back tourism into the city. Um, this is how they did it. They created a, a certain areas of the city as declared as a old. This is in 1986, it was done, 1985-6 was. And then the bridge, which was, you know the story, which was then bombarded, and we helped them doing it as well. The second important thing is the use of resources. And I have to use the word, the intelligent use of resource. What means use of resource? It means how intelligently you can use your money, the material, and the thinking process. This is very important that how that is done in each of these projects. For example, and this is a project in Burkina Faso, built by Francis Carrier that you've all heard, that here he has learned how to do the new technologies that brought it there. This, this village, there was no roads. So in order to make a big roof, you had to, if you want to do it in metal or in concrete, you had to bring them these long rods. The trucks could not go. The trusses could not make. So he, made, he brought these in small pieces with small trucks. He puts them together and he creates that space frame, that very large span. So this is how intelligently he uses the material and also teaches the local people something that they can do it on their own. They don't need an engineer to come and do this uh, calculation for them. Another question is very important and you always keep, I'm sure now in your discussions talking about this, is identity. What is your identity? The first of all, one forgets that identity is something which evolves, it's something which changes. Also, each generation they are looking for their own identity. We cannot go and dig in archaeological sites to find an identity out under the, the earth and bring it out and say, this is what I want to be. No, what you are thinking is what you want to be. So what is important is that how you feel good at space. I'm just using this um, mosque in Bisoko, which was when it was built, one would think that this is nothing to do with mo this has nothing to do with the identity of these people. But in fact, it was a very modern building with all the principles of modernism. It's not even the dates. We're talking about 1970s, late 70s, 80s, when the design was done. That he has brought all the elements of the identity in a totally new fashion, in a totally new space. And he, was cap he, he could give the identity to the people. That was the people of that generation were thinking that they are closer. They didn't want to go and pray in a mosque which looks like the old one. The old one exists. They still work, they're fine. But today, we are not the same people of, of 14th century, 15th century, 17th century. We are the people of today. So he here even has interpretations. For example, the way that he's put the five um, um, lights, skylights, are on the five principles of Islam. So he's used all the um, uh, all the uh, meanings and all of these things into the design, but in a totally different so the 
identity is given to them, it is their identity. The fourth thing which is very important is innovation. Innovation is not to just have something totally new. How you can reinterpret even something is fashion with a better way of doing it. This is what is very important. Uh, this is a school in China which have been using it. Like here, this innovation that they're using this school in Bangladesh, that it is used, using bamboos, which is something that everything, what is think that they know how to use it, and earth. But it is totally innovative. Because the people here did not know how to compact earth, so the animals will not go inside, so that's one they would use it. The second thing is that they have been using the bundles of the bamboo in a very new way, in an innovative way, to put, put it together. It's a technique which they did not know in the country, and make trusses. So this is how innovation is working. Same thing is this innovation, that how you can use no air conditioning, or little air conditioning on the 36th floor in the country. This is in Singapore, and the way that they use the traditional way of the, to have these horizontal windows that comes, they don't use air conditioning in the heat of 40 degrees in the climate of Singapore. So these are all the innovative things which the jury is looking at. And the final thing is, what are the lessons that we learn? So for each of these projects, when the jury look at them, they were looking at the, what can we learn from this project? This is not an end of the day. So here is, I'm showing you one project which I thought might be interesting for you. This is the city of Nicosia. Nicosia, for those of you who remember, as I said, we're not some of you, again, we were not born. It was divided into two because the Turks, they helped the Turkish community and the Greek community to have a number of problems together and unfortunately at one moment in history there was, they had to split and the Turkish army came and helped them. So now the city is into two. The old city, which is a Venetian city as you can see here, was cut in two with a green zone in, in the middle. It was an airport, nobody could travel. But the reality was not that. The reality was that the sewage was going from one side to the other. The water was also was running. So it was not important that the people are the two enemies, but they had to work together. So here, under the auspices of UN, the two sides, they started working and doing exactly the same project. A common master plan for both sides. They were very good, they worked. We brought them together. We gave the awards to the both sides. These are, they came to the award, the mayors of the, the two sides the technical people of the both sides, etc., they get the awards. And this is how it is divided. Now, this is very symbolic because in that city, this is what we want to see, that the learning, the lessons of co collaboration. In the city, it had a, the city you saw, it had a street which was coming from the north to the south, called the Ledra Street. This was the main street of the city. When it was cut, as we saw, it was cut into two. So, what they did, they had, they had planned to have the same cobbling, the same system, the same street furniture on both sides. Then it was separated by this wall that you can see here for many years and the soldiers are standing there and then people would go up to look there, to look on the other side, like the, the uh, wall of Berlin. When you listen. Things change. One night, they said, no, we're going to be together. There was two governments that were already talking together. That panel you saw, they took it away. The next day, they put some walls, plastics, for this 70 meters, and they inaugurated all the people. So the city, the same street which was cut for 20 years, because it was restored, in one day it was open and became one street, because there was thinking and vision behind it. They learned the lessons of Berlin, not to look backwards, and it, it, well, the photo is not good, but the same people you can see here were the same people who were six months before that they were getting an award from us there. Now, this was just a glimpse of the things. You can have more information. All of, on each of these projects, we have got a film which explains the project with full documentation on the following places. Thank you very much, and I'm pleased to